Well, welcome to Tech Voices. My name is Drew Bond, and I'm the president and CEO of C3 Solutions. And uh, I am your host for today's Tech Voices interview series. Uh, C3 Solutions is a nonprofit educational organization, and we're dedicated to promoting free market solutions to our world's greatest climate, energy, and environment challenges. You can learn more about us at c3solutions.org and subscribe to our free online newsletter at c3newsmag.com. There you'll find uh, a plethora of information about technology innovation and free market policy solutions, all related to climate, energy, and the environment. Today's special guest is Frank Mueller, the CEO of XL Terra. XL Terra, which means excellence for Earth, is a Swiss company at the forefront of innovation. XL Terra develops, produces, and commercializes sustainable technology solutions applied to the environment. XL Terra has offices in Switzerland, Poland, and the United States of America. Specifically, I believe Frank is in Michigan, the great state of Michigan. Frank, how are you? I'm good. Thank you, Drew. Yeah, welcome. Uh, welcome to Tech Voices. Excited to have you here. And as we were talking earlier, uh, welcome to spring for the folks in Michigan. Yes, it is here. Thank you. <laughs> well, so uh, Frank, you and I had a chance to chat a while back, and I was so interested to learn about your company uh, because you really have a different approach to things. But before we jump into the company, tell us about you. Uh, how, did, how did you get into this business? What's your background? Sure. Um, I'm going to be brief because it's not so much about me. It's, about, it's more about what we can do for the earth. But uh, very shortly, I grew up in uh, Geneva, Switzerland. I was uh, blessed to grow up in an environment that is very international. So I've always been somebody who was able to travel and to you know discover the world. So I uh, worked uh, my 15 first years of my career in the financial business, as many Swiss people. Um, and that gave me the opportunity to travel more and to understand a little bit more how um, financial flows uh, uh, also drive the world. And, um, you know, that was a very interesting, I would say, learning experience. Uh, however, I felt the need to do something a bit more meaningful at one point in my life uh, when I was hitting the 40s. And that's when I decided to, uh, to join, um, um, to basically to come to, uh, to, to Detroit, to Michigan, to uh, just a bit outside of Detroit, um, with my family, my wife being from, uh, from Michigan. So we moved here in 2011. Um, really in, 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 this, in a search of, of something more tangible for me in my life in terms of profession. So I can feel that, uh, you know, the day I'm going to be gone, I'm going to feel good about what I did. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's an excellent background. And I think a common thread with a lot of innovators and, uh, and frankly, you know, free market folks, but not just free market across the board. People want to leave this place better than they found it and make their mark and, and benefit people around them. So I, I, kudos to you for taking that that step from moving to Switzerland to Michigan, uh, and thank uh, you. And I'm, I'm sure it sounds like your wife was a, a, a big reason for that. But uh, you know, it sounds like the United States actually is, has been a benefit in terms of the way that you've been thinking and your innovation. So tell us about XL Terra and what do you guys do? Well, um, XL Terra, as you said, stands for um, Excellence for Earth. Uh, this is really our vision, and uh, this vision truly uh, derives from uh, the vision of my, my partner, Andrew Niemczyk, who is uh, the, the CTO of the company. When we met 10 years ago, um, you know, it, it took me, I mean, it literally took me a few seconds to realize this man was different, but it took me two months to accept it. Uh, it was so Im impressive, the, his ability to understand that nature, uh, that it really um, uh, was a shock for me, and I was not able to accept this immediately. And it took me really two months and a lot of my wife's energy as a PhD to try to find the, <laughs> the, the, there's something wrong in what he says, but we, we couldn't find anything wrong. And I, I'm surrounded by very smart people. And I realized that the science behind uh, uh, what, what, what he's doing was, was amazing. And so um, that's when we, we decided, okay, we need to join forces. Uh, uh, Andrew is somebody that says, I need the person that brings my vision to the market, and uh, uh, and that's what I am. I'm so I'm the CEO of the company, and Andrew uh, uh, is responsible for all the technology coming out of our labs. Yeah, and, and tell us about XL Terra in terms of uh, you know if you take a look at your website, you've got a couple of products, uh, yeah. one specifically on water management, one on trees, and then it looks like you've developed some drill rigs to install those. Um, yeah, but even walk me back further because there's an interesting kind of subtext here, if I recall, which is related to Chernobyl. Uh, and and, uh, and so 
you know, you're not a nuclear energy company, uh, and yet you've got some background having worked in Chernobyl, which most people, if they know of Chernobyl, they probably only know the television series, which is, you know, sort of uh, telling the story of, of the tragedy that happened there years and years ago. And then, you know, oftentimes people overlay that with, with modern nuclear energy technology, which is actually quite different and quite safe. But, but so help us, just walk me back to that spot of, of how did Chernobyl play into your story? Sure. Well, um, obviously, what we did in Chernobyl uh, not only is historic, but uh, it has given us uh, a huge media attention and uh, a huge credibility in, in the market because we suddenly have achieved something that no one has been able to do that before. And um, you mentioned before that you know, we have a few other technologies that are already in the market. And um, the common denominator between all our technologies is besides that we think different than anybody else, we, we truly um, uh, we use the, the, the energies that are in the ground, uh, that are abundant, and that are a true renewable energies. We are able to basically harness them to achieve positive results. And so what we're focusing right now, I mean, since 10 years, is to address the major issues that we create as a civilization, okay? So stormwater or water management was one of the first major issue we, we, we started to tackle with a, with a technology called GEPS, which stands for Groundwater Energy Passive System. We deal with groundwater or stormwater in a very different way than drainage. We are able to actually manage stormwater within the same hydrological, hydrological cycle. We are able to do this very naturally. So there's no side effect or, or, or negative effect. If you take drainage, there's also always a negative effect. You did, you're not solving the problem ever. You just bring it somewhere else. We are able to solve the problem of stormwater. So it has a lot of application. It can be used for residential customer. It can be used large scale for roadsides. It can be used for airports. It can manage really, it does basically manage the, the water into the ground, which has never been able to be done before. Then we have another technology dedicated for the health of trees, where we address soil depletion. That's another major uh, no problem. And then now what we just announced in Chernobyl, we can actually address soil pollution. And the common denominator is that we work within the earth. We install our technologies that are every time very different. We install them into the ground according to the engineering that we have developed to achieve the results that we're looking for. So, so just to clarify for you know, a, a layman, if you will, I mean, so what I hear is that your technology is, is very passive uh, in the sense that you install it and then it sort of leverages the forces of nature uh, in, in the water instance to, to actually leverage what would otherwise be a flood to instead turn into like a, a water uh, management system, if you will. And then I guess the same would be true for trees or even nuclear waste. Correct. So um, uh, every time what we do, we use, because it's a passive system, we just use the forces within the ground to achieve our results. Um, in, the, in the case of uh, Chernobyl, uh, we have actually demonstrated the technology that is called NSPS, which stands for Nuclear Separation Passive System. What we have demonstrated in Chernobyl on an area of two and a half acres is that we can reduce radioactivity, we can accelerate the decay of radioactivity um, in, in, a, in a time frame that is absolutely uh, uh, um, incredible uh, in its, again, on a human scale. Because if we have to wait 20,000 years to clean up a site, you know, this is, this is not, this, we can consider this, as, you know, it's not possible. We need to be able to speed up that process. And we have achieved that uh, uh, in Chernobyl uh, after one year of installing NSPS, we already have an average of 47% uh, reduction in the air and more than 36% reduction in the soil. And this is um, all monitored and measured by an institute that is in Chernobyl since the catastrophe called SSE Echo Center. And they are monitoring the results on a constant basis for us. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's, it's just an incredible uh, work and it sounds like, you know, so often innovation starts in a lab and it finds a, it, it, it's hard, it's a very hard process, right, to get an innovation from the lab to the market. You've got to demonstrate it at scale. But I mean, it sounds like that Chernobyl demonstration was really that. It was demonstrating this technology yeah. at scale and on one of the hardest problems there is. Correct. And you say something very important. When we started discussing with uh, uh, the authorities in Ukraine, and we're going back to 2017, November 2017 was our first discussion. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine when we started talking to them to tell them, yes, we can solve your problem. We're going to bring a bunch of uh, specific shaped, uh, 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 you know, uh, extrusion, and we're going to put them in the ground and everything is going to be they looked at us with big eyes and like, you know, uh, we have people coming here since 35 years, nothing ever works. OK, um, so their reaction was like, why don't you why do you need two and a half acres? Why don't you do it on a, you know, 30 feet by 30 feet or 100 feet by 100 feet? And the, our reaction was immediately no. Either you do a demonstration on a large scale where nobody can, you know, <laughs> this say, okay, that's just a test or a lab, or whatever. We're not testing. This is a demonstration. So we needed the two and a half acre. And that's also for another reason. We need the necessary power from the ground to be able to achieve those results. If we would have done it on a small scale, the results would not be that powerful. Now, the, the larger we go with this technology, the more power we can use, the more results we can achieve. Hmm. It's just so fascinating. I, I can't wait to actually see it in person. Uh... I don't know that I'll get a chance to go to Chernobyl, given what's happened in, in Ukraine. But I mean, maybe a, a simple question, but you know, maybe there's uh, more to it than I could suspect is, I mean, what has been the impact of the war in Ukraine uh, on, on that demonstration in your business? Well, um, well, first of all, uh, the impact on our colleagues is obviously uh, uh, very hard. We are uh, in constant uh, um, uh, interaction, in constant support of them. We actually help some families. Uh, in, you know, some some the, the the women are allowed to uh, get out of the country, so we're helping some some of their uh, wives and and, and, and daughters uh, uh, wherever we can help them. So we hosted them in Poland. We hosted them in Switzerland. Uh, however, the male they have to stay there. They um, nobody has been injured or or lost their lives. I mean, the life continues for them. Uh, they lost control of the site for a, probably a month, a month and a half during the, the, the first uh, part of the invasion. And then the, uh, the, the Russian forces left the site and they went back approximately a month and a half ago. And uh, they found uh, some, some damage. I mean, not, I don't think it's major damage, but they found a lot of, uh, um, you know, they, they, they took away some of their uh, um, IT material, uh, et cetera. So, um, they are assessing everything right now. I, I receive information uh, weekly. Uh, now, as for our uh, installation, well, we are on the ground. Our installation is passive. So nothing has changed for our installation. It will keep actually, you know, doing that decay. And during the time of the, of, of, of during the time where the Russians were in control, you heard a lot of news about the radioactivity increasing again in the area because of all the troops and the material going through and basically the, the dust release in the air uh, created some more radioactivity and, and settles again. Well, at least our acre, our two and a half acres are actually contributing to helping that because the, the, the system is keeps working. So uh, what we had planned this year was to um, have another set of results because we said in five years, our site will be back to natural uh, radiation levels. So we had initially planned that we're going to go back in uh, in the in, in the summertime at one point to collect again soil samples, water samples, and and, and air uh, measurements, and then announce them uh, in October or in November this year. Um, water uh, um, air samples should be able we should be able to do them do them no problem regarding the water and the uh, soil we're still waiting if the machines are all still working properly and then we will see so so far the system is in place it has not been affected by the war uh, unfortunately our people have been affected and some of the uh, uh, material in their labs uh, have apparently been affected and they're, they're controlling that right now Okay, well, thank you for that. And uh, certainly our thoughts and prayers are with those people there. I just, uh, thank you. Uh, as you know, the world is watching. So that's such a critical uh, moment in our history. And 
and uh, it's good to know that there's uh, there are some free market entrepreneurs still able to work in Ukraine and hopefully maintain and, and grow for what one day would be a, a flourishing Ukraine. So let, let's switch to uh, something more domestic here in the United States. What are some applications for your technologies? Well, um, for for the NSPS technology, which is the one that we demonstrate in, in, in Chernobyl, we actually uh, have just yesterday signed an, signed an agreement with a company, and this will be announced uh, rather soon, that will be in charge of developing that technology in the US. And um, there's going to be two, basically, uh, the strategy is quite simple, it's just to bring it as quick as possible to some, um, I would, we call them the low hanging fruits, some uh, other type of pollution that are much easier to, to, to manage like PCBs, uh, like PFAS, et cetera, because the same technology can also address those kind of pollution. So we're very quickly gonna propose our, our solution and our engineering to, to, uh, to uh, some uh, players here in Michigan. We're gonna start here in Michigan, the group that uh, is gonna develop that is in Michigan. So that's our priority now. So the second step, and we will we'll also going to be very quick on that, is to really uh, talk with uh, um, uh, the, the national at the national level because we can address some severely polluted radioactive sites in the U.S. We have three in mind that I will not disclose right now, but we have three in mind where we can immediately engineer a solution and immediately start working and and really provide a solution for the long term in a very simple and effective way. Yeah, well, that's exciting, uh, and uh, I certainly look forward to seeing uh, some other good results. Uh, how, how do folks learn more about Excel Terra? We'd, we'd love to point them in your direction, and uh, it sounds like there's just so much more to learn. Yeah, well, thank you for, uh, anyway, for giving me that, uh, that platform, because uh, as incredible as we did, we're still incredibly unknown, and uh, this will change this year, because we, we, we have a a pipeline of announcement that are going to come between now and the end of the year that will change that. Uh, uh, right now, we are we are uh, we have our main office and headquarters in uh, here in uh, in uh, Michigan, in a in a in a beautiful little city called Hazel Park, and uh, so uh, that's where we can be reached at, and uh, and that's where we're going to develop you know the, the national expertise in engineering. We have uh, our website. Um, uh, has all the information and the contact information. Uh, Excel Terra, you spell it uh, uh, E X L and then Terra, so E X L T E W R R A dot com, and then obviously you have all the information you need. That's excellent. Well, Frank, thank you so much for your time. I would I would have uh, so many more questions, but we are limited on time. And sure. I just really appreciate all that you do, and uh, really wish you and your team all the best. We work hard every day and uh, there's going to be some amazing things coming in the future. Thank you for this platform, Drew. I appreciate that very much. Yeah, our, our pleasure. Our pleasure. And, and let me just say for our audience, who, anyone who's watching or listening, please share this uh, interview if you liked it uh, on all of your social media platforms. Uh, if, if you haven't already, subscribe to our online newsletter at c3newsmag.com. Uh, we, we'd also love to hear from you if there's other topics, other companies that you're interested in learning more about. Uh, just uh, shoot us an email. Uh, so once again, this has been a Tech Voices interview. This is Frank Mueller. Uh, he is the CEO of XL Terra. My name is Drew Bond. I'm the president and CEO of C3 Solutions and your host. And until next time, I hope you get to work innovating and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.